Hey, this is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by. Um, today I'm going to do another uh, faux technique and I am going to start off by just using a piece of my palette paper and then linen, which is a faux art multi-surface paint. Again, this is just to give you a little insight onto different types of painting that you can do using that as a background. Maybe you want to paint a floral or um, even just a, maybe even a, something for your kids, your child's bedroom, you know, whatnot, or you want to actually do this technique on a wall and not as an actual background for a painted piece. Or maybe you're finishing furniture and you want some type of a technique to use on a piece of furniture. It's very versatile used on different variety of different surfaces. I'm, for the purpose of this video, just going to uh, do it in a small uh, piece of paper, such as this canvas paper, and I'm going to put the base coat on using a sponge. Now, of course, if you're doing a wall or a piece of furniture, you might want to use a brush or a roller or a wall sponge have those uh, to paint with as well but because I'm doing it on such a small surface I'm just going to do it with this sponge it still gives me pretty good coverage I wouldn't recommend this as far as doing it on a wall I would definitely you know, use something that's made for walls I mean this is actually made to do decorative painting with walls but not to paint the whole surface And then what I'm going to do is allow this to dry and then continue on with the next step and the next um, item that I'm going to be using. My last video I did a demo using wax paper once the surface was painted, so pulling off the paint. With this, the next uh, technique that I'm going to show you, you don't necessarily have to use anything to extend the drying time on your paint you can actually just put it you know if you want to maybe add water to thin it or if you want to put a glaze in it you still can do that as well or just do it dry it's really just depending on what kind of look and how easy you want to make it and uh, then we'll continue on once this is dried we'll continue on with the next step Okay, for this next part, I am going to use um, yellow ochre, which is also for folk art enamel paint. And then I'm going to use what is called a hockey brush. But uh, this, I've had this for years, it was actually purchased through Dick Blick. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, yesterday, or earlier in the video, I went ahead and I had base painted my palette paper keeping in mind that I'm just doing this on a small scale to show you different techniques that can be done and then once I do this I will do some type of a painting over the top of it and this can be done on a wall or furniture you know, any type of a surface that you'd like to do just make sure you're using paint that's appropriate for that surface whatever it might be this is just kind of a neat brush just to kind of uh, just lightly, randomly put the design on your, prop, your item. And I'm just kind of just doing some cross patching here. Now the paint I'm using is not thinned, so again, if you want it to have a thinner look or maybe flow easier you can add some glaze to it or um, water depending on on the paint and what you're actually painting it on you know if you're doing it on glass obviously I would not thin it with paint maybe do their uh, flow medium with it to thin it out some let a little bit of the undercoat show and just do it randomly. When you're doing 
doing faux painting and you're doing it on a larger area, like I said, this being a small area, it is kind of, uh, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot to do. But, you know, do it sporadically so that you're not creating like a, like this section and then that section next to it, you know, work randomly all over so it, it looks as such and not as a specific pattern, unless you want it to be a pattern, then, you know, go, go for it. Um, but I would recommend just, you know, kind of just doing some cross hatching with it and just have a little bit of the underneath coat showing. Got a little thick up here. I kind of like it better the way it ended up down here. It's been a while since I've used this brush. But anyhow, you get the gist of it. And then once this dries, then I'll actually go over it and do a painted design for you. Just to, once again, show you what it looks like using it as a background for a painting. Um, and, you know, I'm sorry that I'm not doing it on a larger surface, but obviously I cannot paint my whole house just to show you different techniques. So um, this is, you know, the best that I can do at this point, maybe do a larger, larger surface, but I think you get the gist of it. Um, if another advice too with, with doing faux painting is if you are planning on doing a whole room, I would, you know, do your base coat through the whole room. And then with this technique, um, it, you know, just keep going with it through the whole room. And by that, I mean that don't try to just do one wall, come back a month later and try to get the next wall to match the style that you painted the first one, because chances are it's very unlikely you're gonna get it to match, especially if you start working with more than you know a couple colors and I mean this, I'm considering this two colors, your base paint and then the, the overlay paint. Once you do that, you really just need to, in order to continue the momentum and have the same look on each wall, is to continue doing each color, then going back and doing the next color so that you get a more, um, I wanna say a more, um, goodness I'm losing my words here uh, you know get get it get a look that actually you know ties in together and it doesn't look like oh well that was pretty nice but I'm not sure what you were doing over here and then you kind of have a different style over here you want it to all look one style and if you're not doing it as I mentioned it's going to be hard for you to create a balanced look it's going to all look different and if you take a break from it and you you aren't, you know, basically either taking a break after you've completed one whole, you know, all the walls with one paint or whatever the last paint was that you used. And then if you take a break and you come back and then do the next color, then you probably would be okay. But um, just for the purpose of, you know, doing it, I typically, you know, do the whole thing at one time. So, you know, I continue on, do a color, come back, do another color if I'm doing more than, you know, more than a couple colors. So that's just my advice to you. And um, the, the next thing I'll show you then is how I painted, uh, we'll go ahead and paint uh, more than likely it's floral. Cause that's basically what I do and uh, show you what that looks like on this. But I like it, you know, just a little cross, cross hatching here. You know, with this brush just lightly, you know, I, I like it. I like how it turned out. Okay, so I've decided to go ahead and do an orange lily. Um, just for the sake of, of doing this video on this background, I think it would be a nice uh, contrast. I'm going to be using Quicker White, and these are all folk art enamels, or well, this is folk art enamels, I should say. I'm going to use a pure orange, which is the folk art multi surface, and then my berry wine, which is a folk art enamel, excuse me, and then the thicket, which is also an enamel, 
the forest moss, the coffee bean, and then I'm using a folk art flow medium uh, for part of it. So I'm going to go ahead and use my one stroke brushes, the uh, 12, the 3 quarters, and then a liner brush, uh, which is a very thin one, so hopefully it works. I have never used this one for what I'm do going to be doing. I am going to go ahead and start off with doing the petals of the flower using the larger brush. And I'm using the wicker white and the pure orange together. Hopefully I get a good flow here. Alright. So I'm going to go ahead and just touch my brush down and then pull it back. I'm trying to get a thinner leaf or a petal I should say. One thing I have a uh, have more of a difficult time with for some reason. I'm not really sure why is getting my my tips pointier. So I'm just basically double loading my brush, and I am going to be pulling it up to a tip there, and then bringing it back. I'm trying to keep those petals somewhat thin on the flower part. And, you know, basically, I do five or six, five or six, um, petals, leaf petals. I kind of fix that one up a little bit. And on this one, I'm going to do six. Like I said, it's a little easier if I'm picking up my paper and being able to turn it some, but for the sake of this uh, video, I'm not doing that. Get that middle a little bit better. Not quite so happy with that. All right, so there I have the flower petals. And then what I uh, typically will do next, again on this you can let it dry a little bit or you can just keep going with it. But I use the green, and I'm going to mix it with just the thicket, I should say. I'm going to mix it with a little bit of the flow medium just to get more of a inkier um, flow so it's not so thick. And this is where I have a tendency when I'm doing the stamens in the middle to do a little, do them a little thick. Well, you know what? I'm going to pause here for a second. I actually, I want to do something else first before I go into that. I'm going to throw in another brush. I do have another liner brush I'm going to use. And this one's going to be a little bit thicker because I forgot about doing the freckling. And I just like to just sporadically put that on. They don't have to be perfectly round or whatnot. I just kind of touch them on, and just kind of dot them. And it's kind of fun when they actually mix with the other paint a little bit, since it is still kind of wet. So now I almost forgot this part. It's easier to do now than it is to do once I put the other, the middle part in. And I did not thin these out at all. You can if you want, you know, to make it a little inkier. And there's really no, you know, precision on this. It's just sporadically done. And you can bring it down further if you want or make it a little thicker, however you want to do it. Now I'm going to go to the inky consistency that I made. And hopefully this brush will work. Like I said, I've not ever used this brush for this purpose. Um, but I'm just going to basically dry it up, draw it on this way. It's a real thin... I don't know why my hands are shaking so much right now, but they are. And I'll do six of these. And that's basically because I have six petals. 
and I like to kind of make them go in different directions. I mean, you can have them all going in the same direction if you want, but I like to to do them this way where they're just kind of in different, you know, not in a certain pattern, of course. I'm gonna go up here and put one up here. Okay, once I get that done, I'm gonna use my berry wine and I'm going to put the little ends on. And just kind of like a little half moon shape. And put them on like that. And then I'm actually going to go back in with the wicker, or I'm sorry, the thicket and the, the thicker part of it. And not the, and put a little, couple little lines there. Then what I'm going to do is, well, yeah, what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm just going to keep it simple with one flower. If you want to add more, you can do that. I just like to try to keep my videos fairly, fairly short, if at all possible. Anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and go in here with just the longer leaves like that. And you know, if it comes up to where it's dry at one point, like it, it just happened, just go back over it. You know, it's not a, not rocket science, as I like to say. And I have a tendency to like to double up the petals, whichever direction I'm doing them. Now, if you're someone who wants to be conscious of the light flow, then you can do that as far as being conscious of, of where the light and the dark green are, are landing on the on the page. And for the purpose of this, I'm really not thinking so much about that. I'm just giving you an idea of what can be done. On this one, I'm not going to show you as far as like doing it in a bedroom or doing it on a wall, that kind of thing. I'm not going to not going to give you that. And I don't know if you can hear it raining in the background here, but I'll tell you, we have had so much rain. And you know what? I'm looking at this. I am going to add maybe a couple little buds. Talk myself into it. And typically what I like to do is just come up on one side of it and do some little buds and then maybe have a little bud coming out the bottom down here and you can just leave it like that pretend that some petals are tucked down inside of it because obviously it's a six petal and not a three um, doing the same thing down here maybe And these are just like such, such easy petals to do. You just kind of put and pull back. Come up here and pull back. Now you could also have, if you wanted to have more of the petals, you know, like they're coming down, you can do that too. Let me see here. It's kind of hard when you can't move it. Or you're not moving. I, I could move it, I guess. I'm going to go over that one. Yes, I can interlock like that too, if you want. So I'm good at that. Now, since I did that, I might want to go back in here. And because I did some freckling on these earlier, I'm pretending these are the back side. But these are kind of down, so I might want to do some freckling there. And I'll just kind of quickly add some freckling that's mashing into my white a lot. So we'll come back here and add some more brown on. I could have been a little neater. That's okay. You get the gist though, right? You get the gist. And then over here, you know, I could show a little bit of the dotting if I wanted. I like what I did over here. Get these some more some brown to them. Um, you know, you can you can do that or you can leave it. 
either way it doesn't doesn't really matter and I'll kind of do a little bit of a stem and then kind of hit it like it's coming up there and you could do this with maybe even a smaller brush but since I didn't plan for that I'm just going to leave it out like that and then I'm going to go ahead and add some longer leaves And as the, I did on one of the other, the last one that I did, I actually showed, you know, the possibility of uh, using this as a bedroom, or not a bedroom, but I guess a border. You, know, you could create a border with this type of a flower too if you wanted. Um, not necessarily, you know, it's not necessary to do, but, you know, you could. If you wanted to do it on a wall, or if you are just using this as a background, that's fine too. Um, and I know if you ever follow any of my videos that I, I get a little happy with the uh, leaves for whatever reason. I don't know why I like them so much, but I kind of do. Like I said, and you can have fun with them. You can turn them in different directions or, um, you know, pay close attention to the direction of the sun or the light source whatever that might be for some reason that one is wanting to be a little bit uh, transparent which I'm not really happy about and you can add different flowers if you want you know you don't have to stick with just one flower I just like to do one at a time just to kind of you know give you an idea how I would do it I'm just kind of doing some little filler filler leaves in here kind of fill out the page a little bit more I mean, you can make them thinner like the ones I initially was doing or just do the basic, you know, one stroke kind of leaf. If you wanted to add more, you know, you could do that, but I think you get the gist of it. And uh, there it is, the finished product. Pretty simple. And again, whatever your painting style is, you know, do the faux backgrounds and then do your painting on top of it. Or, you know, as I've mentioned before, you know, paint it on a wall, paint it on furniture. It really doesn't matter. Whatever your project is, just have fun and go, go for it. All right, um, that's it. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and share. I'd love for this uh, my videos to be shared as much as possible. If you know somebody that would be interested in my my style of painting, you know, please share it. The more the better. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you. Feel free to comment it below. There is a bell if you'd like to know when I am submitting a or posting, I should say, a video. Click on the bell so you're alerted. Um, once again, I appreciate you stopping by to check out my painting. Have a good evening. Until the next video, we'll see you then.